Today, we'll dive into the case of Seventeen's mistreatment, and trust me, it's about to get crazy. Pledis Entertainment is notoriously known for the mismanagement and inability to provide respectful and fair treatment to all of their artists. Having less artists than the other agencies under their wings, it should be easy for the agency to build a safe and civil environment for their idols, but this still remains just a dream. With Pledis Entertainment driving their senior group, New West, to near disbandment due to their continuous mistreatment and Priston actually disbanding only after two years of activity, many fans of the boy group 17 are worried and rightfully so, as Seventeen suffered numerous cases of ill treatment due to their agency's inability to manage them respectfully. It's a well-known fact that Seventeen made their debut in May of 2015. Diehard fans will also know that there are several hardships hidden behind it. Let's go ahead and uncover them for the casual listeners as well. Originally made up of Seventeen members instead of just 13, Pledis' first plan was to debut their new boy group in 2013. However, that didn't happen. Pledis Entertainment actually went bankrupt, losing all finances prepared for Seventeen's debut. In the following years, Seventeen and their hard work would quite literally help Pledis to recover from the bankruptcy. The debut was pushed back as the agency continuously kept promising the members that they would debut soon. Soon being the code word for two whole years. It was said that these two years were really hard for all of the members, as them waiting for their debut felt like it'd take forever. Those two years shaped Seventeen into the self-produced group that they are right now. They choreograph their own dances and compose and produce all of their songs on their own. One of the reasons why Seventeen were able to succeed in the first place is because the members did the management part of the company is responsible for. Mingyu made and printed out promotion stickers and designed merch for their fans. Sun Quan took it upon himself to call up different variety shows to promote Seventeen in hopes of giving the group larger exposure. They were doing all of the things that the agency was supposed to do, but instead, Pledis gave them the bare minimum. The financial situation of Pledis plummeted down really fast. Do you want to know the secret behind Seventeen's debut? The vice president of Pledis Entertainment sold his house just so that Seventeen can finally make their debut. Imagine how much hope he must have had for the boys to take such a massive risk. I think he deserves more respect as well. But even though Pledis now had the finances to finally debut Seventeen, their beginnings were far away from ideal. They didn't deserve this. Seventeen didn't even get to warm up for their music scene when Pledis' secrets were spilled and their disgusting behavior toward the members was revealed. The financial status of Pledis wasn't good and it didn't get any better even after Seventeen debut. Now, one would assume that the agency's main responsibility is to provide all things necessary for the group to have a successful and possibly easy start. Well, Pledis said, screw that. In November of 2015, when Netizen saw Seventeen perform at a music show, they noticed something that didn't sit right with them. The boys seemed to not be equipped with the right gadgets for a smooth performance. Pledis was incapable of providing the much needed things for Seventeen and their members were forced to pay for their own equipment. Not to mention that Pledis was already a hot topic due to the alleged mistreatment of the boys during their pre-debut days. According to netizens, some 17 members had to purchase their own earphones for the performances while others begged their parents for one. Mind you, some of these members were still students during their debut and they had to financially support themselves right from the start. 17 were seen using ordinary earphones for the performance. Instead of the proper in-ears, even the main vocalist Sun Kwan, who should have been the first to get in years was using standard earphones that you could buy at a local supermarket. Seventeen's leader, S. Coops, was seen with earphones that were taped to his ear. This caused an uproar as the fans were shocked and saddened that Pledis wasn't even capable of such a trivial task. It would be somehow acceptable if Pledis went and redeemed themselves after Seventeen's debut. <laughs> they didn't, and the boys performed without such important equipment for months. During their manse and very nice stages, the boys were still without in years. But it didn't end here. Pledis and their slip up caused an avalanche of fans and netizens coming forward with proofs of the agency's continuous mistreatment, straight up rude and mean behavior. The boys have been punished for trivial things since their early days. It's truly heartbreaking to see that even the smallest things could anger the staff. The disgusting behavior and disrespect aren't the only things that Pledis should be held accountable for. Stealing was one of them as well. And I don't mean the company taking large chunks of the paychecks and giving the members basically a minimum wage. Even though Hoshi himself hinted at the possibility of the company stealing money from them, when they appeared on Africa TV, the members and their staff made a bet that whoever won was going to pay for the food. 17 members won and Hoshi innocently asked, are they going to buy it for us and take it out of our balance again? This left the fans questioning if Pledis really did steal a certain amount of money from their paychecks. 
Cleta staff allegedly stole gifts from fans that were obviously meant for 17 members. Usually, fans spend a lot of money on these gifts since they are more often than not either handmade or custom. Many fans thought their favorite members got their gifts but then had to be met with the harsh truth that it was actually the managers or staff who were enjoying their gifts all along. This dark secret sent a huge backlash to Pletus' direction. It caused numerous fan sites to close down or go on a strike to protest against the agency's actions. The staff had definitely done some questionable stuff. Carrots agree that this alleged ceiling is nothing compared to what the boys had to go through during their pre-debut days. Due to South Korea being made up of different provinces and each of them bearing its own unique traits, different dialects and accents are a completely regular thing. Apparently, not for Pletus. In this video of 2013, 17's Won Woo is filming a short clip. During his introduction in the beginning, he speaks with a bit of dialect. One of the staff who were filming quickly jumped in and saying, What did we say we do when we speak in dialect? We'll see you after this. From the obviously flustered and nervous look on Won Woo's face, it makes people wonder what really goes on behind closed doors and what dark secrets are hidden there. It's alleged the staff used to get physical with the members as well, in the forms of corporal punishment. Sun Kwan was once hit in the head while being insulted because of his weight. Instead of defending himself, Sun Kwan just took it and even apologized to the staff. What's more, Pletus aired the boys getting punished, scolding 17 members in front of their fans, calling a member a pig for simply eating alone, asking a fan why they like a member not from the visual line. Pletus seems to have absolutely zero respect and empathy towards their members. In my opinion, Pletus Entertainment should be thankful to have such a massive group under their name right now, as Seventeen worked hard day and night to not only be successful and popular artists, but to also pull the agency from their slump they got themselves into by lacking zero skills in management. It didn't stop. Pletus Entertainment had years to reflect on their past actions and take something from it. They had opportunities to prove themselves to be a good and safe company for their idols. They didn't do it. Although any physical and verbal acts have stopped, Pletus is still behind in taking care of the members. There have been numerous occasions where Sasings followed the boys around, disturbing their private outings, schedules, events, even as far as following them around in cars, not allowing the boys any privacy. Pletus should have stepped in and protected the members from this invasive behavior, but they did nothing. In 2018, it went a little too far. A group of Sasings, who actually disguised themselves as fan sites of the group, followed the boys to a restaurant in order to see them drunk up close. The Sasings stayed in the parking lot literally stalking Seventeen as they were having a private after party and then got the guts to follow them back into their dorms. Hoshi even stepped out of the restaurant to address the situation and asked them to stop following them around. A few months after that, when Seventeen were on their Japanese leg of tour, the Sasing sneaked into their hotel where the members were staying to place a gift in the front of Woozy's room. The Sasing even posted about it on her Instagram, saying she couldn't give it to him in the venue so she thought this would be the best way to give him her gift. The fans were absolutely outraged because of this behavior and some even demanded for Seventeen to cancel the remaining tour dates as they feared for the safety and well-being of the members. People also questioned how safe exactly are these boys with their security team. Recently, Pletus Entertainment was joined by a broadcaster KBS who was under fire for putting 17 safety at risk once again. Due to the pandemic, the safety precautions are more important than ever, and well, KBS was accused of not following them. In December of 2020, 17 crossed paths with someone who was tested positive. To take precautions, the group underwent health tests and decided to self-isolate. Well, at least that's what they planned. Pletus Entertainment stopped their activities and tested all of their staff, but KBS only had their KBS Song Festival in mind. Dispatch summed up KBS's actions as there was no time to wait for the singers to self-isolate. They called 17 in to pre-record. 12 members tested negative for the virus and it was only S. Coops who didn't get his results. But they still had to go to the pre-recording without him. Mind you, it was December and probably hella cold, but the members were still seen wearing only slippers as they've been rushed out there. Thankfully, the members all tested negative, but Dispatch still contacted health officers who confirmed it was not safe to attend the pre-recording either way. Angered fans demanded an apology from KBS with the hashtag KBS apologized to 17. After KBS cancelled the group's appearance at the festival altogether. I want to end this with a memory that a fan shared when she met S. Coops during a fan sign. She joked around saying that she's considering joining Pletus Entertainment, to which S. Coops only replied with, Don't come. I think that speaks enough on its own. What do you guys think about Seventeen's position in the company? Make sure to subscribe and thank you for watching. Bye!